چیزی میخوای بخوری؟ درمونش میخوای چایی میخوای؟ Hello, Dr. Kilian. How are you? Very good, very good. Hello. Hello. Hey, nice, nice seeing you. Hello. Oh. So uh, let's wait a little bit. Uh, if you have Stephen and Boston uh, to connect, so let's just uh, briefly, briefly chat and. I'm a little bit, I, I need a warm up time because I, I just finished a minute ago another meeting on, on a completely different subject. <coughs> so we are in the uh, computational chemistry class. Um, the ultimate goal is to get some practical skills that you can apply to your thesis research. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have four chapters. Uh, the first chapter uh, will end with algorithm for uh, geometry optimization and molecular dynamics. But before we arrive to this uh, stage, we want to be quite uh, rigorous and uh, start from, from the very general situation from definition of molecules with a collection of positive nuclear ions and uh, negative electrons. Uh, hello, Boston. N nice seeing you connected. So um, we let me. I, I don't know if I don't know if you remember anything based on, on your homework. You you did everything perfectly. But uh, I'm forgetting things very quickly. Let me try to remember what, what, we, did, what we did before. So um, we did agree that uh, a molecule is set of uh, nucleus and electrons. We, we formulate a Hamiltonian sort of energy operator, which includes five terms. So uh, two terms for kinetic energy kinetic energy of all electrons, kinetic energy of all nuclei, and then three terms for uh, potential energy, uh, electron-electron repulsion, nuclear-nuclear repulsion, and electron-to-nuclear attraction. Then we discussed that um, if we literally, we, we, we plug in this Hamiltonian into Schrodinger equation, and we formulate a wave function of a molecule, which depends on all uh, independent coordinates of all electrons and all nuclei, which will be a monster, uh, which uh, we never saw. So based on this uh, impossibly heavy problem, we decided to start divide and conquer strategy. So to chop, to separate very evils. And our primary uh, goal is to try to separate electronic and nuclear degrees of freedom. Okay. Uh, then we did attributed everything we can to electronic degrees of freedom, including the mixing term, that, uh, including the attraction between electrons and nucleus. And we agreed that solution of such shortened Hamiltonian so uh, electrons kinetic energy, electron and electron repulsion, and electron nuclear attraction will be will formulate a basis to solve overall overall problem. And we ended about at this point. So and I'll, I'll show slides. Do not, do not worry if uh, what I'm telling sounds uh, crazy and strange. Uh, I'll, um, I'll show 
slides with these equations and uh, ask you for for the feedback or, or questions several times. So you you, you go. I, I extremely appreciate uh, any any feedback. It's much better if we do discussion rather than um, one way broadcast. <sighs> so also. Did you, did you get the um, pages from the book in the, in the email? I was sending yeah, an email yeah. or two. Yeah. Okay, so um, if you glance through, you will see everything I'm going to show, maybe in much better way. And uh, there are very careful and accurate formulation of all statements. So I will just try to uh, reproduce what, what I understood while reading this uh, pages from the book. Okay. And um, there, you, you probably have seen a little uh, uh, one slide uh, on page number seven with the homework. I will review and reformulate. Uh, do not try to do it right now. We will we, we discuss it after the after the lab. We will discuss the tool, how to do it, and it will be uh, much quicker than previous homework. Like uh, if the previous homework took uh, thirty minutes, this one will take maybe five minutes, or well, maybe six. <laughs> um, feel free to interrupt me any time. I'm going to share a screen in a, in a second, and then I may not see your faces. So do not hesitate to uh, give me voice command, like please stop and explain something. Well, I, I hope you, you do see the uh, slides. Let me go to, to uh, number the right beginning. So books, uh, chapters. Um, so if I want to be quick and satisfy your uh, curiosity uh, by end of the Friday lecture, or maybe by the middle of next uh, Tuesday lecture, we should arrive to this slide. Uh, right now, it looks uh, very ugly, especially with my uh, uh, handwriting uh, highlights. But um, the main um, outcome of our consideration will be in the bottom two lines. So if you do carefully, if you carefully practice separation of variables, we will be able to formulate, to justify that equation for electronic degrees of freedom, which we already uh, stated, and uh, equation for nuclear degrees of freedom, which um, relates to everything left from the molecular Schrodinger equation can be solved uh, independently. And uh, this is quite a uh, practical, reasonable practical approach. So uh, my goal is to arrive to these two independent Schrodinger equations, one for only electronic degrees of freedom and another only for nuclear degrees of freedom. And the rest um, in this slide is connection between these two. So the top line is an equation that combines solution of the uh, electronic Schrodinger equation and nuclear Schrodinger equation into overall solution of molecular hemodynamics. So it will be summation of product. So this uh, chi is uh, nuclear wave function that depends on position of ions and phi is electronic wave function that depends on uh, position of electrons. So if uh, if it makes sense, 
you can show yes. If it's already boring or not clear, just show some symbol and request. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, yes. Can say again, what uh, before R M? What that uh, one indicate for you say something? This submission of. Uh huh. Okay. Yes. Submission uh, of A. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll come to the editing mode so I can uh, draw. Uh, equation. Yes, yes, I understand. I understand the equation here. And uh, this one. You're asking about this one? Summation sign or, or something different? Uh, summation, then there is like an X sign. What does that X mean for that one? Okay. This. So. Yeah. This one. This. Uh, this. Uh -huh. this is uh, not. Uh, this looks like X, but it's slightly different symbol. It's Greek letter chi, uh, and it is. It come. It is coming from here. So it is a solution of uh, a nuclear Schrodinger equation. N nuclear this, part. Yes, and phi is solution of. Uh, yeah, electronic part. Um, the stuff in the middle are technical details that I'll, uh, you'll skip, but as we go through today's and uh, Friday's lecture, we get to more details. So um, in about two weeks from now, we will need to uh, make presentations on the skills that we uh, learn in the in the labs. So uh, I just want to play open open cards, and uh, on Friday I will offer you to fill the uh, list of volunteers. So you may think uh, during the time before Friday, which subjects you want to cover and you will split this uh, section between all attendees of the, of the class. So it will be more than one topic for, for a person. So we, we already covered uh, Linux environment, X uh, connection, partially uploads of files. Um, I didn't cover this one and probably will not cover, but someone can find it. Um, and about this much, I will cover uh, tomorrow in, in the lab. M maybe more, but uh, uh, I, I intend to cover this subject. Um, the, the rest, maybe we'll cover in, in, in a week. Uh, for those of you who are thinking about crystals, uh, clays, and especially crystallized uh, crystalline semiconductors, uh, I recommend this subject. So, uh, Boston, uh, you may think we, we are not voting today, but when when it will be time to vote, uh, you may consider to select this uh, subject eleven, unless someone will be in front of you for, for this. Uh, okay. And uh, after we learn how to build atomic models uh, during the Wednesday session, I will offer a, a simple homework. Highly likely it will be the same as last year, or maybe I will slightly modify uh, suggestion just to build a couple of molecules uh, based on uh, molecule drawing software. Um, I'm sure some of you already experienced uh, drawing software, but we want to, uh, to have everyone on the same page. So I will revisit it and uh, you, will, you will practice it. So uh, I'll, I'll quickly skim through the slides that we did before. So quantum mechanics, molecules collection of electrons and nucleus. Um, 
solution of overall molecular shading equation as a product of nuclear wave function and electronic wave function. And our plan is to uh, plug in the solution uh, of, of the, which is combined of electronic and nuclear wave function into overall molecular shading equation and see if you will be able to derive equation for this uh, nuclear wave function. Uh, so in some sense, we already have the equation for phi, but we do not have oh, yes, phi, but we do not have equation for chi. I, I did introduce it uh, before as an answer, but we do not know how to how to get it. We do not have the uh, we didn't derive this equation. And, uh, I'm planning to to show it. So it was a review of what we did before, and um, now we are. Uh, going to actual uh, material of, of lecture four. So here is the uh, molecular Schrodinger equation. And I'm going to, there, there are just few symbols, but I'm, I'm going to, uh, talk about them a little bit longer. If you feel lost, or if I'm not explaining things in a reasonable way, there is a uh, cheat sheet for myself and, uh, of which steps we need to go over on the uh, left side of the, of the lectures. So in the center of the slides, uh, I am placing molecular Schrodinger equation in the column form instead of uh, instead of the line form, and I'm doing it this way because uh, it is quite uh, large. If I put it in a line, it will be just longer than one screen or one uh, whiteboard or blackboard. So. Do you have any associations with this equation? Do you identify any any terms that you recognize? I suggest uh, please please uh, just say if you have something to say or show if uh, everything is uh, is not clear. Okay. Okay for me. Okay, so. Um, what is what is the first term? Uh, nuclear kinetic energy. Okay. What is the second term? Uh, potential energy. Okay. Nuclear <laughs> potential. Nuclear energy. potential. Uh -huh. What is the third term? Um, electronic chemical <laughs> energy. So potential and kinetic energy of the electrons. Um, yeah. Correct. So it is a combination of. Uh, uh, kinetic energy of electrons, uh, the repulsion of electrons, and uh, nuclear to electron attraction, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I just combine it into, into a single term. Uh, what, what is W? Hamiltonian for um, uh, Hamiltonian is uh, is here, and uh, W after equal sign is uh, if you can put little hats everywhere, and W doesn't have hat. It is eigen energy. Okay, and then uh, everywhere here where I have the three dots, I'm going to plug in this uh, uh, overall wave function of the of the molecule. So here is the plan. Probably I will practice a little and copy paste the situation here and there again and again. 
and then I will do a trick. Since we agree that we already know uh, this electronic wave function, or we assume it is known, I will try some trick to remove it completely. And these tricks will be mathematically correct. And after re uh, removing electronic part, we will, we will have only nuclear part in the equation. Make sense? If, if you are uncomfortable or if it looks strange, you will hesitate to complain to us. Uh, can Professor, can you repeat just the last point about uh, why we will neglect the electronic bar? Yes. Um, <laughs> neglect is uh, not a good word. The correct word to eliminate electronic wave function. Eliminate electronic wave function. So um, there are, there is an orthogonality property. So if the uh, electronic wave functions are good wave functions that obey property of orthogonality, there is a way to eliminate it through uh, multiplying by uh, wave function once again and then integrating. I'll, I'll show details, but there is a very justified and legitimate way to remove electronic wave function and keep only nuclear wave function. So the goal, uh, we, and we are trying, we will try to follow this goal. Mm -hmm. uh, if I do not want to type, Again and again, I can show the chip. Copy and just uh, paste. Uh, several times. So uh, typically, we put Hamiltonian in the brackets and write wave function only once, right? But here, I want to literally mention each of this, uh, uh, each of this, this to repeat this wave function uh, again and again, because the activity, the way how the operator, different operators act on the wave function is slightly different. And I want to carefully monitor the uh, um, details, how the uh, um, operators act on the wave function, how different operators act on the wave function. Okay, so here is the same thing uh, that I was uh, writing by hand. So summation or index, nuclear wave function, electronic wave function. And that's the same term again and again. So um, there is There are, there, are, there are several tricks. Um, the main trick that I'm going to practice uh, is called um, orthogonality. So there, and another trick is that um, wave function is eigenfunction of the electronic Hamiltonian. So anywhere where we put this electronic Hamiltonian acting on the wave function, we can replace it by the eigen 
value of electronic Hamiltonian acting on the wave function. So it is a simple trick and a little bit more complicated. I do have it on, on the next slide, but I better write it from scratch. Maybe you'll um, appreciate it, but I'm quite confident that this trick uh, is known to you. So please give a maybe show by hand, uh, yes or no, if uh, you are aware of the orthogonality property of wave functions. Yes, yes, no, no. Okay, um, so first thing, when we are acting by the Hamiltonian on the wave function, when we already found this wave function, one of the properties, epsilon e phi a, that this solution gives us a lot of energies, e1, e2, e3, and like often infinite number, and a lot of functions, phi1, phi2, phi3, so the functions do depend on positions of, of electrons. And I put on one symbol, R lowercase, but in fact, we have like all Cartesian coordinates of all, all electrons. So um, if this equation, if this time independent Turing equation is solved correctly, then all these functions obey an important property they are orthogonal and normal to each other. So if we take wave function number one, put it conjugation, multiply, multiply by wave function number one, conjugation, integrate over R, then the answer should be um, uh, I need help from Boston and uh, Lina. You can say or show. Yes, answer will be one. Right? So if we take uh, wave function one and wave function two, different function, and we practice integration. Now it's turn of linear. Yeah, so okay, now it will be zero. All right, thank you. Uh, Sarah and Kia, does it make sense? Okay, now I'm going to summarize this uh, two equations in more general form. So if I have equation, uh, if I have uh, orbital number i, this very able. And orbital number j. And I uh, integrate. Then the answer will be either one or zero. So it will be one if i equals j and zero if i is not equal j. Make sense? So uh, this, is, uh, this is quite general property and we are going to make a benefit out of it. And if uh, someone in the future gives you a hard time about how uh, that it should be applied to many electrons, one can tell we have from R1 to R number N, so many independent uh, variables. Rn. One can integrate over all uh, variables and one can write several, several integrals, like integral, integral, integral. The property will stay the same. Um, there is a shorthand notation for this uh, property uh, known as 
Kronecker delta. So one writes a delta letter from Greek alphabet and puts indices i and j. So the symbol means it is either zero or one, depending if they coincide or not coincide. Okay. So we are going to practice. We are going to practice. Let me go back to what we wrote together. We are going to practice this property in the following way. Uh, we already have electronic wave function in each term, right? But if you do want to practice orthogonality property, we may add, we may multiply each term of our big equation by the missing part. So by this integrals, by another uh, wave function, and by the symbols of integration. So if I multiply each term of equation by the same factor, nothing is changing, right? It's a mathematical trick that is uh, always allowed. So, uh, I better re rewrite it. Other otherwise, uh, we all will feel uh, will feel lost. I'll take um, this. Slide, paste it here, and just add things uh, by hand. So uh, we do have the electronic wave function here, there, there, and there. The reason to practice orthogonality is to convert electronic wave function into zero or one. So uh, I'm going to add the green block in front of each orbital. Okay, here, there, there, and there. And this green block will be integral then I use symbol phi once again. Instead of letter A, I use another letter B. And I put star sign here. And the arguments are same as, as it was before. If I want to be rigorous, R vector mm, manifold for all things. And then, and then I can, can put dr at the end of the term. So um, let's practice the benefit of copy-paste environment. So I'll I'll put put this here. there and there and then I write dr at the end of uh, each uh, line so my intentions in this uh, little exercise to practice orthogonality and uh, get remove this phi sub uh, a uh, electronic wave function completely. I'm going to inspect each term and check if this trick is possible uh, is possible for each of the available terms. So while doing this trick, I will need to recognize that the nuclear uh, wave function uh, is formulated in terms of uh, derivative, like use regular uh, definition of momentum operator as, as derivative over, over position. 
And uh, another thing that um, I'll go back to the uh, operators that we, 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 we developed together. When we were defining property of orthogonality, we had this greenish and yellowish blocks together, right? Now we do have something in between. So between uh, greenish and yellowish block, we do, we do have kinetic operator of nucleus, uh, potential operator of nucleus, electronic operator or eigenenergy. The last term eigenenergy will be the simplest because uh, it is only a number. But for the three terms on the top, I should practice extra care. So this care is related to the fact that in quantum mechanics, one cannot swap the order of uh, wave function and operator for free. If one has an operator in, fr uh, in front of wave function, it may change the wave function and it may affect uh, everything that follows after. So we should put, uh, or I should put extreme care about this uh, operators and uh, report to you if the original plan of practicing orthogonality will be possible. For the last term, it will be possible for sure. No, no question. I'll show it in a minute. For uh, previous three, I'll try to be careful. So, um, before I go forward, uh, and for the next year, I should bring this slide higher up. So we have four lines, four terms, and the term number three, we can replace electronic Hamiltonian acting on electronic wave function by electronic eigenenergy acting on electronic uh, wave function. So basically we are removing this hat symbol and this makes a situation also quite simple for the third term. Uh, please stop me and request uh, comments uh, if I'm getting too excited and stop uh, uh, and, and, and stop looking at you and, and uh, getting excited only about equations. Whew. So, I would like to believe that uh, everyone is happy with, with the slide, which is just a reformulation of the, of the stuff that we were doing together. Uh, please confirm if you see, uh, if you agree that it is not new, if it is the same as we, uh, as we saw before, or show if, if you want me to give more comments. Okay, okay, thank you. So uh, here is index A, here is index B, and here is the uh, integration. So for processing each line of this equation, I'm going to use the rule of uh, snake and rabbit. Or maybe it can be formulated as a uh, rule of um, snake and, and mouse. So, and if you do not do not follow and do not care about content of the of the lecture. 
probably this slide will be the only thing that you will remember. So suppose you have a mathematical expression where you see symbol of sigma and symbol of delta, right? So uh, I'm going to interpret them as the uh, aggressive and angry snake with teeth that hunts uh, a little rabbit with two ears. Okay, so when the uh, symbol of summation and uh, delta function meet each other, the summation eats delta. But upon this trick, it disintegrates itself as well. So basically, if we see these two symbols meet each other, in the next uh, line of equation, they both will disappear. Okay, so basically, it is a summary of linear linear algebra course. Uh, so this uh, corresponds to the um, row by column multiplication, if you are uh, if you remember linear algebra. So let's try to practice. Let's try to practice it. I don't know about you. I hate my own uh, writing. It's uh, it's it's ugly. So um, let's see. So we did agree with uh, this uh, equation. And in the next slide, I'm going to move this integration right here. So for term number four, it will be possible because uh, W is not an operator. It is only a number. So we uh, keep nuclear wave function unchanged. We have the summation, which is our snake. And we do have integral of wave function with index B and wave function with index A, right? So when we perform this integration, it generates delta of A and B. And now we do see this snake and this rabbit. Uh, meeting each other. So as a result, we are going to remove them both. And as a price for this little trick, there is only one change. Wherever we had index A, we will replace it to the letter B. So uh, basically, term number four is processed as follows. Summation over index A, nuclear wave function with index A, delta function AB, will result into only chi with index B. So in the term number four, I did achieve a success. I got rid of electronic wave function and kept only nuclear wave function. It depends on uh, positions of nuclear, all nuclear ice. And it has uh, this W in front. W. So we are done with term number four. Okay. Uh, let me know if, uh, if, if you're fine, uh, if, if, if this looks clear or at least convincing. Uh, Dr. Kellen, yes. so, so now we will have for the fourth term that uh, one, only one, uh, one function as a solution? 
which is yes, we need to formulate uh, all the four lines as an equation for this uh, nuclear wave function, for the sky function. Mm -hmm. So we need to remove uh, remove symbol phi everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, yes. Um, why uh, you want to remove that wave function? I want to remove electronic wave function. Electronic wave. The electronic wave function because we already know it. We assume that, so, that uh, electronic wave functions are already found by uh, this uh, electronic Schrodinger equation. So if we act uh, by electronic kinetic energy, mm -hmm. electronic uh, electron electron repulsion, mm -hmm. and electron nuclear uh, mm -hmm. attraction. Mm -hmm. So this equation gives us phi sub a. So by solving this equation, we already know phi sub a. Okay, yes. Therefore, we may want to exclude phi sub a, electronic wave function, from, uh, from everywhere, because we already know it. We need only to learn what is the solution for nuclear wave function. Okay. Okay. Yep. So no, phi no. is known, chi is unknown. Uh, this this symbol is uh, uh, some people read it as chi, and some people write it as as in this way. Uh, we need to talk uh, to someone with. Greek background to learn how to correctly pronounce this letter. Uh, okay. So for the term number three, because of this property, we replaced electronic Hamiltonian onto this uh, eigen energy of electronic wave function, and we were able to move the uh, phi sub b through, move everything through this uh, symbol. So we put it as a factor up front. And then we practice the same trick. We convert integration of phi sub b, phi sub a into delta, into delta a b. Then we practice this uh, summation. And then, as a result, we obtain only chi sub b. So our, our trick does work once again. For line number two, uh, nuclear attraction is an operator, but it is the operator that acts operator for nuclear degrees of freedom for uppercase R. For lowercase R, it is a number. This nuclear operator doesn't have power to change electronic wave function. Therefore, we can also put it as a factor up front. And we practice our trick once again, and we put here chi sub b. So we are very lucky with uh, fourth, third, and second term. But unfortunately, with uh, line number one, the situation is not as, as simple. The, we need to uh, represent kinetic, operator of kinetic energy of nuclei as uh, operator. That includes derivative over, posi over position of, of uh, nuclei. And here we recognize that both nuclear wave function depends on positions of nuclei, which is no wonder. 
And electronic wave function as well does depend on both uh, electronic and nuclear um, positions, at least parametrical. So in some sense, we will need to practice derivative. We will need explicitly apply the operator of nuclear kinetic energy onto these two functions. And uh, I want to give you a heads up that practicing of this derivative will be the hardest part of the course. If you survive next 10 minutes today and the lecture on Friday, it will be like ascending, ascending, and the rest of the course will be descending. So if you survive this uh, little exercise, the rest will be really easy or noticeably easy, easier compared to what we do right now. So do not, um, I, I, I do not want you to develop uh, an impression that it will be ascending complication again and again. We will reach peak very soon and then we will go to easier materials. Whew. Okay. So here is where we did arrive as I uh, wrote it uh, in the previous year. So term number uh, four. And right now I'm not showing anything new. You do not need to take notes or uh, pay careful attention. Here is the term number three, line number three, line number two, right. and line number one. So here, everything is uh, is really good. We have only nuclear wave function. Here we have only nuclear, nuclear wave function. And here we have only nuclear wave function as well. But in the uh, line number one, we do have an interesting construction. We do have product of electronic, nuclear, and here electronic again. And here we have T. Uh, which is uh, kinetic energy of nucleus, which includes derivative over R capital. So it will act on the product of these two functions. Um, here, I am rewriting this line, this term from line number one, once again. So we do have summation. We do have electronic wave function with index B that we have contributed for orthogonality. We do have wave function with index A that we originally had, and we have nuclear wave function that we want to keep. So we want to keep this, and we really want to uh, eliminate, eliminate this one and eliminate this one. But uh, before we do so, uh, we may want to practice a derivative. So uh, kinetic energy operator is momentum squared. And uh, so it's P squared, squared over two masses. And momentum is uh, defined as Rank constant and then derivative over coordinate here over nuclear coordinate R capital. Therefore, if we combine this definition of momentum and this definition of kinetic energy together, we will get uh, this form of uh, kinetic energy operator that uh, those of you who were taking quantum uh, mechanics have seen many times, right? And e even if you were not taken, it's not too complicated. So, uh, constants, mass, and then second derivative. So basically, I'm going to practice second derivative for a product of two functions. Uh, you can either 
practice it on, on a piece of paper yourself or just uh, watch me making errors or, or and uh, laughing, ma making uh, fun of me doing errors. So um, I, will, I will temporarily forget about this summation and uh, orthogonality factor. I will also forget about this uh, three factors and we'll focus only on the uh, second derivative and, and two functions. D, dr, d, dr, chi times n. So um, let's first keep the last derivative unchanged and open things inside the bracket. So what is a uh, derivative of, uh, of two function? I need help. Product rule. Huh? The product rule, which is derivative okay. of the first times the second. Okay. D chi over D R times phi unchanged, right? Mm -hmm. Plus. Okay. Derivative of phi times chi times d phi over dr. Yep. So I'm trying to be careful and not change the order of function. Just be yep. careful. Now uh, I'm going to practice this uh, product rule once again for uh, each of these uh terms so we have product of two two functions so uh from from here i will get derivative of derivative times phi electronic function unchanged plus derivative of nuclear wave function times derivative of electronic wave function. So I'm, I'm done uh, with the first part. Now, from the second part. Uh, I, will, I will have derivative of nuclear wave function over um, position of nucleus times derivative of electronic wave function And the last term will be nuclear wave function unchanged times derivative of derivative of electronic wave function. Okay, catch me if you can with any errors. If I didn't do errors right now, it doesn't mean I will not do them in the future. Um, and right now we all are adults and we just uh, do this thing uh, for fun and for the profession, but in the undergraduate classes, I offer generous extra points to whoever finds uh, errors in my derivations. So you can play this game if you like. So um, do you see any similarities in these uh, four terms? So the uh, second and third term look the same, right? So we can just put factor two here 
and remove this stuff. Now, let's analyze what are the uh, what are the terms. So, the first one here is is a really good term. So we have second derivative d two over d r capital square applied to nuclear wave function multiplied on the electronic wave function unchanged. I am going to uh, disclose the secret that if only this term will be available in uh, our derivation, then we will be very lucky. And actually we will assume that we have only this term because the derivative second derivative over position of the nuclear wave function is basically a definition if, if we add constant will be definition of a kinetic energy of nucleus so it's like pure uh, high quality original definition of kinetic energy of nucleus operator of kinetic energy is applied to nuclear wave function and electronic wave function is unchanged so it is a really good term and people uh, often call it pure so this one will be pure kinetic energy term pure nuclear kinetic energy term pure as, as you can guess, the rest of the terms are impure, not because of the bad, but they are very uncomfortable mathematically. So they show quite strange situation. They show the change. So here is, uh, I'm, I'm just basically rewriting DDR chi multiple. Why uh, we not changing anything? DDR of phi. So we see response of electronic wave function to the nuclear motion. Or if you look literally, we inspect how much electronic wave function will change if we move, if we elongate or contract bonds between atoms, if nucleus are moving. If we have intact molecule or material at zero Kelvin, if nothing is moving, if there are no reaction, then we do not need this term. Bonds are not moving and electronic wave function is not changing in response to nuclear motion because nuclei do not move. Make sense? I'll probably write it with my other handwriting. Kinetic uh, zero, zero, zero temperature. Nuclei don't move. electronic wave function don't respond to nuclear motion or don't change doesn't does I need to improve my English doesn't change and here is the only the first derivative the second term is even more exotic here the nuclear wave function is not changed, but we are looking second or order derivative uh, of the electronic wave function in response to nuclear motion. And typically, if the uh, if this term is small, 
then this one is even smaller. Yes, uh, Boston, you you're raising hand. Yeah. So, are is this like kind of ignoring that Born-Oppenheimer approximation since we're assuming the nucle the nuclei can move? So. we are rigorous and we are not we haven't yet applied born oppenheimer approximation because nuclei can move as soon as we will drop these two last terms we will forbid nuclei to move and we will accept born oppenheimer approximation okay make sense yes Whew. good so uh probably i need to write it down v for b for b nuclei to move v drop last two terms and we accept born oppenheimer approximation So um, I believe even if we are not over time, it's uh, over, we have spent uh, sufficient amount of uh, intellectual efforts to analyze these things. Uh, it will be healthier if you stop about now. Uh, not because I, I, I trust your intellectual power. I even have my own energy. But if you uh, think about it and analyze it on, on the background, it will be more healthier to, to progress forward. And um, this slide that I was showing at the beginning, we are not arrived to it yet, but uh, um, it kind of summarizes uh, what, what we did. So uh, we already covered this part. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, we practiced this uh, um, rabbit and the snake for terms number two, number three, and number four. And then, uh, when we will meet next time for the lecture, uh, we will separately treat the pure part of kinetic energy that we will keep here. And impure, we will give names and notations for these additional two terms that are typically dropped in the born oppenheimer approximation. And we will discuss when uh, they are um, non-zero, which is not a big uh, secret. When so something burns, explodes, uh, then they are important. Or if energy is dissipating from electronic to nuclear degree of freedom. Uh, also, let me remind me, remind you not me, to prepare, make up your mind uh, how you see uh, yourself presenting something from the uh, Wednesday labs. There will be some materials. And even if there are some materials that are not yet presented, it, uh, I will ask you to vote. So on, on Friday, we will do little votes. And with this, uh, let me announce completion of today's meeting. Uh, have a nice uh, evening. If, if anyone is welcome to disconnect uh, and, and depart, and I'll stay here just for a few minutes uh, in case uh, some questions will, will appear. But do, do not hate to do not. Uh, hesitate to disconnect if uh, if you do not have questions. Dr. Kellan. Yes. Have a good night. Bye.
Thank you, Professor. Ah. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Boston. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Sarah. Goodbye. Professor, yes. I have one question. Uh, can you uh, just go back to the slide presentation slide? You just this one here. Oh, okay. So, oh, yeah. So when we need to present this? About in two weeks. I will discuss it with you. So uh, maybe in two Tuesdays or in uh, in two Fridays. Uh, it's better early than later. And uh, so which subject, uh, which topic? Um, you will give me a topic from this. No, no. You will select the topic that you like. I I want to that in class we practice democracy and everyone selects whatever uh, is more interesting and pleasant to you. But professor, for me everything is new, so I don't know which one I need to choose. Uh, you can you can think you can you have time until Friday. Um, you can select what what we already done, like uh, the first two subjects, or you may plan on uh, like uh, build atomic model. This this is the simplest. Simple. This is the simplest. You'll see you'll see during tomorrow web uh, that it is uh, and and. I promise you will like it. Okay. It's 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 really, it's really fun, but uh, you have you have time to decide whether you really like it or maybe you. And what about that atomic model from X-ray diffraction data? Um, this is um, this is also easy, mm -hmm. but I will not have time to explain it. It's more. Uh, going online and learning it from like Wikipedia and some databases. So okay. it's, uh, if there is a, if there will be time, I'll do short demonstration. Mm -hmm. But it is, uh, it's quite easy and uh, it is needed only to those who deal with periodic materials, okay. like crystals, uh, semiconductors, uh, uh, metals. Um, if if you are doing uh, biological molecules or polymers, mm -hmm. it is it is it is not as important. Okay. Okay, and professor, um, we need to submit a, a homework again. So when there will be um, there will be another homework, but right now you are not ready to do it. I will show how to do it during the lab. Okay, during the lab, you will show that how yes. to do that, that yes. thing. Then we will submit. Okay, so this yes. week we don't have any. Right, no, do not do anything today. Wait until tomorrow. Okay, okay. And okay. Do, do, do not worry, the homework will be really, really easy. Okay. Okay. Professor, can you uh, go back um, the equation slide again? Which this. Uh, the, uh, you wrote something that eliminate this part, eliminate this part. So uh, we uh, eliminate electron part because we already solved this one using Hamiltonian's equation, right? That's why mm -hmm. we eliminate this part. Okay. Correct. Correct. Okay. So the the equation that I highlight is uh, red things. Uh, on Friday, it will convert. Into into this uh, nuclear equation. Okay. I think so you, you you see there there are terms that we just discussed. So this one is number four. Yes. Right. Yeah. This one uh, is number three. Okay. This is number two. Yes. And and this will be number one without uh, without additional term. So we'll keep only pure. On the pure term. Okay. Okay, Professor. Okay. Thank you Bye. for your questions. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Good evening. Good evening, Professor.